Hey, hi, hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Jess and here's a Nigel. We're gonna talk about what we read in February. So Nigel and I just went to get our vitamin D, AKA we went on a walk and it's nice and sunny outside. Oh my God. So it is actually Bebe's nap time. He was napping, but someone on my pet peeve video said that one of their pet peeves is that Nigel is not in every video. And I was like, that's a valid concern. That's a valid critique. So here he is, even though he wants to lay down. Say hi. I'll, I'll let you be. He's fine. Also, did you notice my new channel art? I didn't point it out yesterday, but I will link the artist, uh, her Instagram down below because I love it. So precious and it's perfect. So shout out to her. She did a perfect job. But yes, we are here to talk about whatever in February, which I read a lot more than I thought. And it's weird because we were in Norway for a week and I barely read on that trip. Like I read a couple chapters and I read like one full novella on the plane. But I really didn't read much. So the other, <laughs> in such a short month, I really put in time with the other days, but I also have been really, <sighs> depression has been kicking my butt. And so some days I just sat on the couch all day and read. So that would make sense. Anyway, I am on a new antidepressant. It's day four, three, day three. So far, so good. Hopefully it keeps like this and you know, this is the initial phase, so it'll probably mellow out because I do feel like I have more energy than I normally do. But yeah, anyway, we'll see. So let's get into it. There's no order here. I just go through um, the order on my Goodreads. The first book I finished in February was The Darkness Outside Us by Elliot Schaefer. This came out last year and was actually on my anticipated reads for like 2021 and I didn't get to it. So I... I think after reading Project Hail Mary and not liking that, people were saying that I would really like The Darkness Outside Us. And it feels like I read this ages ago. It just said it finished on February 3rd. That's literally like one month ago. Why does that feel so long ago? But anyway, this one is, it is young adult, but surprisingly, I still really enjoyed it. And the story starts almost like Project Hail Mary, where you start with a character who's waking up in space and they're kind of groggy and don't really know what's going on and where they are, but he gets his memory back and uh, starts realizing what's going on. So this is set in like a, a future where there's only really two nations kind of. There's like one that's heavily controlled by basically Russia and then another one that I think is basically the American one. And there was like a mission that went out and I think it like crashed or something, but there's been like an emergency beacon from one of the main character's sisters and he's chosen because he was, you know, trained uh, to go. He's a trained astronaut like his sister. So he's trained or he's the one chosen to go on this mission to hopefully recover her or, you know, see what was causing the beacon. It's kind of like a rough uh, premise. But as he's waking up and getting more acclimated to the ship and realizing, like remembering what he was there to do, he's finding things are off. There's AI on the ship. The AI is acting sus. They're just like, he's trying to put this information together. What he has in his mind, the information the AI is giving him and then what he's seeing in his environment and outside of the ship. Nigel, please. The math ain't mathin'. And so it's like a sci-fi mystery because you you start to, not to spoil things, but like as you get further in the book, you start to realize more and more that his suspicions are correct. Like this is all not making sense. Is he really, like why is he really on this mission? What really happened with his sister? Lots of questions. And I thought it was really good. It was really fast paced and um there are, are there, a there are time jumps but they make sense with the story there was a lot I didn't know where the story was going I really knew no premise of this and so as I kept going I was like oh I didn't know this was going to be here and I mean you can already tell from the uh cover there's another character very interesting how they were added and so for me, not reading much into the premise, it helped me be more surprised. And I was like, wow, it was really, I think the chapters were short, page turnery. It was fun. It was a fun, I have like minor critiques. 
like the ending not as strong as I would have liked but overall it was really fun and enjoyable and definitely was it, it like satisfied my sci-fi craving that I've been having especially after not liking Project Hail Mary I really enjoyed this one so that was a win so then I read It Happened One Summer by Tessa Bailey. This is my first book by Tessa Bailey and I know from some people that they really love Tessa Bailey or some people don't like her and apparently some people call her the queen of dirty talk and some people find that cringy but some people really like it. So I was like well I heard a lot about this one last year. I heard that it was inspired by Alexis Rose from Schitt's Creek because we have like a rich spoiled princess who ends up in this small town and that's all I really knew about it. So I borrowed it from the library and because you know you <laughs> especially with me we never know especially with romance so this one again it's been so long I'm not remembering nobody's name let me pull it up okay so our main character is Piper her sister is Hannah and the hero is Brendan okay so Piper and Hannah are literally rich girls spoiled rich girls who live in LA Piper is way more spoiled like Hannah at least like has a job even if she got her connections from their stepdad to get the job but you know partying paparazzi all these things piper's the a girl so she starts out by she gets broken up with and then she goes and does something ridiculous and ends up like being arrested and her stepdad's kind of like i've had it <laughs> i've had it you're not doing anything you're just partying like you literally at least hannah's working you know and so their biological father passed away when they were very young so and he was from Washington like the state of Washington their mom doesn't really talk about him but he apparently had this property in Washington he had a bar and they have been like paying someone to maintain the bar all these years but he's like okay this is gonna be like your lesson Piper you're going to Washington to like run the bar and like get it into shape for, in 30 days so she shipped off there but her sister Hannah is very sweet and goes along with her and of course it is like a reality check because spoiler alert not really the inn is the bar is not in great condition and they're staying in an apartment above the bar and Brendan isn't he's from that town and he's also a fisherman so he's one of those people who go out on like I was I was envisioning the greatest catch the wild catch the great catch you know those shows where they're doing those dangerous uh the dangerous catch whatever those big dangerous fishing expeditions like they go out for crab they go out for all these different things that's what he does and they of course he has preconceived notions of her coming into his town she sticks out like a sore thumb she has impressions of him it's a romance so love ensues but I ate it up okay I ate it up I was really nervous but I was obsessed. I think I read it in like one day. Let me see. See all my activity on this book. Yeah I started reading it and I finished it. Like I just laid on the couch all day and read it. I even though Piper and maybe because I love Shit's Creek so much I love Alexis and I could I could see that inspo in the mind but I also really liked her sister and the relationship they had and I thought it was really nice that her sister didn't have to go there and suffer and she stayed with her and they just made great progress and and Piper really had some character growth and they really in, the story incorporates like people who are in the town and Piper builds a relationship with them it was so sweet and her and Brandon and I didn't mind like I could see why some people don't like the dirty talk because sometimes it was like well that word but overall I enjoyed I enjoyed the steamy times and I was just like I don't know just envisioning this little coastal town in Washington and the dangerous catch whatever I now I want a story like focused on somebody who does that job like another one I don't think there's a sequel there's another one that's dealing with her sister and somebody else I wonder if we'll get that element in it I don't know I really like that element and just like the small the small coastal town I just envisioned it so well and I thought all the characters felt really real like the main characters and also just like the little old man in the town and this other little lady and all the people that Piper befriends and how she was <sighs> I don't know I loved it I loved it. I said I think I gave it 4.5 on Goodreads but I don't remember what my critique of it was. I just wrote 4.5. I ate this up. So overall I loved it and I am definitely gonna be reading the next one which is called Hook, Line, and Sinker. 
Um, I do want to read other books by Tessa Bailey, although the like fix her up books I haven't heard the greatest things about. Maybe I'll try window shopping. Um, oh, she has a, a lot of other books. But yeah, I loved it. I loved it. And now I just want to rewatch Stitch Creek. So yeah, it was a I, I mean, I put 4.5, but I gave it a five. It was a five for me. Is anyone shocked? Are y'all shocked? Are you surprised? <laughs> Okay, I finally finished Empire of Silence by Christopher Rocchio. Rocchio? Don't know if I'm saying that correctly. I started this in January. I didn't finish it. I finished it. Leanna. 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 Lean in. We need to talk. I, here's my thing is this wasn't my... The issue I'm having with Empire of Silence is it was not some book from like page one I knew I hated and I just got through it to rant about it. I was into it the first like 20-25% I was like oh this is really good I like this setup I like where we're going and I still I gave it a 2.5. Did I give it a 2.5? Y'all I can't remember nothing. February ain't that long. Okay, I put 2.5. I put maybe a 2.5. I don't know. Ugh, it's over. It got a 2 on, on Goodreads. But this isn't a hate 2. This is a I'm disappointed in you, Christopher, 2. Because so promising. So this is an adult sci-fi novel. And it is, our main character's name is Hadrian. Side note, how dare, okay? How dare you name your main character Hadrian when the only Hadrian I acknowledge is Hadrian Blackwater from the Ryeria Revelations, but that's the story for another day, Christopher. So we start out, Hadrian, he's the son of a noble, he's the older one, he has a younger brother, but you know, he kind of doesn't, mm, he doesn't live up basically to his dad's expectations, so he is basically disinherited. Uh, you know, the throne's gonna go to his brother and not him. His dad basically wants him to go join like, this religious order. He doesn't want to go. Story kicks off from there. So we start the story on his home planet and we're learning just, you know, about his family, his position, uh, kind of the, the setup of the world. And it's basically like not our world, but like really far in the future. And, you know, people have col colonized planets. And so, and a lot of Roman influences, but I was vibing with it for the first 25%. I don't think his writing is like anything amazing, but not like so dense that I was like, felt like it slowed me down. Like it was good. I was reading it, I was enjoying it. And so at like 20 or 25%, we are, Hadrian is leaving his home planet. So I was like, okay, cool. We're changing locations. This is really gonna kick off the story. And even that first 20, 25%, I was not bored. I just was like excited that I was like, all right, now we're getting it going. No, because without being spoiling it, it just like something does happen. And while it feels like the momentum should keep going, it feels like it really is like, and then for like, the middle part of the book and then at like 75 percent it starts going up and then and it's like whew. and i know that usually for me it depends on the book but it doesn't need to start out like that it doesn't need to shoot up i can take a nice slow start but we need to keep going like this if it's gonna be this book is like almost 900 pages i read the ebook if we're gonna have a 900 page i'm expecting it to be you know it's gonna be a slow burn i know that but what I did not expect was that I was going to be going good and then we were going to flatline for so long. And it's not like everything was boring. It just was too, okay, maybe I'm being disingenuous by saying flatline. It was just like, uh, 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 like this, the smallest little things and the information, a lot of it is important to build this story. The problem is this is a the the setup of this is it's narrated in first person from Hadrian but looking back so he's already become this thing and he tells you how he's like he's become this really terrible person who's like destroyed the sun or destroyed a star or, star or whatever and so you're like oh so I'm like oh I'm excited to know how we get here and so he's looking back but like he re literally recounts every single day it feels like every single day. It felt like a 900 page prologue. Like half of it could have been a prequel you published later that I wouldn't have read. Some 
of it was important to set set up the scene. Obviously, we need to learn about him, his family, his history, why um, he is how he is, what happened, you know, with his his dad disinheriting him, all those things. Important. That's the first 25 percent. Then when we're switching locations, still important because there are different things that happen to him throughout that time. I'm not saying that's not important. I'm saying it was grossly overwritten in from like 25% to 75 what is that I can't do math 50% like half of it could have been condensed down to like all that in the middle could have been at least cut in half I mean hundreds of pages could have been cut out it is just like it felt very bloated very self-indulgent and I don't know is this self-published I'm not sure and I don't know who DAW is so maybe it's self-published or an indie press it needed a lot of editing in my opinion and I'm torn because the first 25% the last 25% I'm like okay I'm intrigued I kind of want to read the next one but it's also a big ass book and I thought it was going the there was a fourth and final one coming out this year apparently there's at least five somebody said seven I forgot how many Leanna said was coming out and I'm like all this length I don't I don't know so I'm torn I did already buy the second two because I don't have sense so I already own it so I may read it and I will say that while I was struggling I did eventually get the audiobook and I did really like the narrator but there was still so much in the middle that I was like I don't care I don't care I literally don't care so those are my complicated feelings with Empire of Silence if anyone besides Leanna has read it I would love to know your feelings because I just struggle to see where the five star is because and Leanna if you're still listening because when I was talking to Leanna she was like I was telling her about a part I was at and she was like oh yeah that part with that person I like forget about or whatever I'm like how do you forget that's a significant part of the story like this person is in it for a good chunk you can't I, I just don't understand how you read a book five stars and there's parts where like yeah that's not memorable or that's not important or I don't even remember that so like, half of the book I don't know I don't know I will let you know if I continue or if I sell my books I don't know I'm it was a lot it was a journey it was a lot so then after that I read I have a reading vlog that was supposed to come out this week but now it's gonna be next week and uh so those books are part of the reading vlog so I'm gonna skip over those here but I did read I guess it's technically a novella or a short story I don't know what you would call it but it was The Butcher of Anderson Station which is The Expanse 1.5 and it was a, if you watch the show it's about Fred Johnson or if you read the books and he has this like nickname or is known as the Butcher of Anderson Station it was really short I gave it 3.75 it was pretty good um it just kind of gave some backstory on exactly what happened and how he made his transition to who he was working for to who he's working on now so you know just a nice little okay thank you and then I literally okay I almost read these all in a day but I definitely started them at like late at night and I just read two and then I read one the next day so I read a novella trilogy by Christina C. Jones so the first one is maybe this time then maybe next time then maybe one more time and it's the Vegas Nights um is it a trilogy I'm sure but so set in Vegas and the first one was my favorite content warning for miscarriage um, so this is an already established couple and their uh, marriage in trouble and that's the reason so just to be aware of that and so this is Kenza and Denver and they're both very obviously this is black love they're both very successful each of them on their own Denver you know might have been the uh, in the illegal game back in the gap but now he's totally legit and then Kenza and her family because her brother and sister also they all own a business together so they're very successful they're married but it's not going well um obviously the miscarriage is a big part of that and this is very short so I don't want to say much more I will say that love all the side characters Christina C. Jones writing just always feels so real and authentic it feels like these are conversations that like I would hear people have and uh really well developed within a short amount of time but that's I know people are like why do you read up a novella and complain it short? Novellas can be a little bit longer and sometimes I just want a little bit more to be with the characters a little longer to have more of their story but this was already an established couple so it's fine. Sexy times were good of course. 
I want to know more about like what Denver did in the past. Very intrigued about that. But overall, really, really liked this one. I give it four stars. The second two, I think uh, was the second one my least favorite. So the second one was with the brother of Kenza. And this one is like a someone he's been long term friends with. So like friends to lovers. Um, so that one was good as well, but I gave it a 3.5. I didn't love it as much. Um, just maybe their dynamic I didn't love as much as Denver and Kenza because Denver's really like this, like, Ugh. dude. And I I'm not you seeing my yoga mat. Hold up. <laughs> and the, not like the brother's like, not some super masculine dude, but Denver was, huh. Okay, and then the third one is dealing with their sister, which I can't remember her name. It's not telling me here. What's her name? Goodreads is not telling me. And she and this dude who's in a motorcycle gang, which had some, what do you call it? Some different, some different kinky things in it. So I did really like that aspect, but I feel like them as like, I couldn't really, I didn't, really buy into them as a couple like their sexual chemistry yes and like what they were doing was down for that but them as a couple because they didn't really have a lot of time where they were having conversations outside of like sexy times so I still enjoyed that one but the first one was definitely my favorite but I mean a three and a half star three star Christina Jones still a really fun experience and really quick and easy to read then I read, the one thing I read while we were away on the plane was another novella I saw mentioned on Twitter, and it is Sugar Butter Flower Love, a novella by Nicole Falls. This is another black love romance. And this one, you know, you know I love a baking romance. So this one we have, uh, let's see, we have Travis and Isabel. Isabel uh, runs a bakery with her grandmother and Travis bakes. He in is also retired from the NFL and there is a baking competition show and they're paired together but they have history from high school and they don't like each other. So again this was a really short novella and while it doesn't linger on anything too long like it gets through things pretty fast I wanted it to be a little bit longer just so we could stretch out that tension between them because it didn't really last that long. Like I wanted more of like the banter and the bickering between them and then really build up that sexual tension. Um, why does this camera keep, is this camera moving? It's on a tripod, what is happening? I'm confused. So it was just, let me see, this one was like 92 pages, so probably a little less than that on Kindle. Um, I just wanted a little bit more. I just wanted, because Nicole Falls reading read really, I don't want to say like Christina T. Jones, but again, it was really relatable. Uh, there were so many things, like one-liners, the characters were saying, like I was literally laughing out loud on the plane, but I had on my, my headphones, so I couldn't hear it, but so people probably heard me and were like, but... I was having a really good time with her writing and so I just wanted a little bit more time with them to just stretch out that tension but it was still really fun so I gave it four stars. Then I read Black Love Matters Real Talk on Romance Being Seen and Happily Ever Afters. This was edited by Jessica P. Pride and it had I'm trying to find a list of all the authors. So it says Carol V. Bell, Sarah Hannah, Gomez, Jasmine Guillory, Deshaun Harrison, Margot Hendricks, Adriana Herrera, Piper Hughley, Kosoko Jackson, Nicole M. Jackson, Beverly Jenkins, Christina C. Jones, Julia Moody Freeman, and Allie Parker in this collection. And so I don't read many essay collections, um, and especially from a collection of different people, but I know Mara read this at the end of last year, and so I was intrigued. And there were ones that I really enjoyed and um, would like to reread, particularly uh, Beverly Jenkins was really good. Uh, I really liked Adriana Herrera and Christina C. Jones. They're the ones that stand out in my mind, although there were other ones I really enjoyed. I, yeah, I would have to go back through it to know my individual like ratings if I would rate it. Overall, I rated the collection like a three, three and a half but because there were some that just didn't resonate as much with me but they may resonate with other people and again collections just usually aren't my jam but some were like five and some were like three but my least favorite one and there's been discussions of this on twitter was by jasmine guillory so this the title again 
is real talk on romance being seen in happily ever afters. So this is, it says on Goodreads, an inclusive intersectional essay anthology that celebrates and examines romance and romantic media through the lens of black readers, writers, and cultural commenters. So I just, everyone had a different like perspective um, on what their essay was going to be on. And Jasmine Guillory's was about food, which I was like, this can be interesting because I mean, food in the Black community is really important. And it is, a, you know, a important cultural thing. Food is like the way to someone's heart, you know, through their stomach, whatever. But it really didn't, it didn't tie those things together. It didn't tie together Black romance or Black love and food. Like, there wasn't a good connection made there. And it was so short. I was just wondering when it was going to kind of get to the point when it was going to come back over to this overall theme and topic everyone else was talking about. And then it was over. And I was just like, mm, okay. And some of the other ones, they just didn't stand out. Christina C. Jones was the last one. And what a great way to end it because she was talking about black romance and how it is not or at least she, when she is writing these books, she's not writing for a white audience. She is writing for black people. And uh, I think that's an important, I want to go back and reread hers because I think that one definitely had the most points where I was like, mm, yes, mm -hmm, okay. So I, yeah, those, I only had a few that really stood out to me right now in my memory. And then one that I was like, does this fit? Does this fit in this anthology? But you know, people may have varying opinions on that one. I read, reread The Poppy War, which is my third time rereading it for the read along with Erica at the Broken Spine is hosting. And of course it was still was amazing. I gave it, a, I mean, I gave it a five on Goodreads, like a 4.5. I just, I, I, I just love it. You know, I love Rebecca Kwong for bringing us this story. And Rin is Rin. She gets on your nerves and then <laughs> she's not this like lovable character. But it was just interesting again even on my third time reading it just you know picking up on things that I did notice the first time and the way she just discussed different things with classism and colorism within the Asian community and um just some parallels I didn't notice some parallels I didn't notice the first time and I was reminded of how much I love a school setting because my god I love I love when she's at the academy or uh, I can't for remember what it was called. But yeah, uh, so I'm going to be reading The Dragon Republic this month, which has been so I've read now the Poppy War three times so far The Dragon Republic and The Burning God once. And the, at this moment, The Dragon Republic is my favorite. So I feel like that will hold true. I feel when I read it last time, I felt like it was just like from page one to the end. It was like bam, bam, bam. So I'm kind of nervous, but also excited. Um, I read Working Stiff, uh, which is a nonfiction, Two Years, 262 Bodies, and the Making of a Medical Examiner by Judy Melanick and TJ Mitchell, who is her husband. So this is about a medical examiner and she talks about her time. She started out as a surgery resident or intern. I forgot how it goes. And then after just witnessing how stressful, like how much rest they didn't get and like the the multiple day long rotations they're on without sleep or little sleep and just like how burnt out and these surgeons were no good work-life balance um she got into what's this called um forensic I forgot exactly what it's called she, she basically became a forensic pathologist I think that's the term and she's a medical examiner so the story follows most of her time as or her rookie season as a New York City forensic examiner and so she talks about various cases from people um that she's seen also she was working there during 9-11 which was really intense and it was a it sounds bad but a really interesting part of the book but she also talks about her father's and how that's impacted her and her views on other things and I know I saw a lot of people and I kind of had similar feelings but a lot of people in reviews didn't like her views on so her dad committed when she was a teenager I believe and of course you feel abandoned by your parent if they do that but anytime there was a side that she was the examiner on she just kept repeating that it was a selfish act like a hundred like you know, it's so selfish to do this. And like, 
I just think it's a little more complicated than that. So a lot of people rub the wrong way with that. And then this is, I don't know when this was written. So of course, sometimes some descriptions, 2014 of bodies and like talking about people's weight and stuff, uh, maybe not the best. And, but it was interesting because also of course she's adding in different like facts and statistics about just death and general things that possible, like how many people she saw because their death was caused basically from alcohol and, but it's a legal substance. And then um, just talking about maybe things that we see on TV that aren't necessarily true and how things actually go and really talking about the timelines, like even on cases that were like court cases that were homicide and how long it would take to actually like get information um, back uh, or you know being able to identify a body so as a person who watches like crime fiction tv and now also has read a decent amount of like non-fiction about it like I now like know what I'm watching I'm like that's not how that works or it would not be that quickly but it was still interesting it's not it's not a perfect book um but it was interesting to listen to although the narrator anytime she was doing an accent whether it was like a Boston accent or terrible should never should stop immediately no just all accents don't do it oh the last book that I read I can't tell you about either because it has its own video coming as well and I read Middle Game by Shawnee McGuire as a patron pick And that's all I'm gonna say about that. So you should be seeing the reading vlog and those books that I read for that one. And I said too many reviews. And the middle game one. Mm. You might not see the middle game one next week, but anyway, I had a great reading month uh, because I spent a lot of time on the couch reading. Let me know what you read, if you how your reading month went 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 i have some chonky tomes i need to tackle this month and we shall see <laughs> if i am successful in that but um let me bring back your favorite person to close out this video i'm so sorry oh i know i know what look tell them bye bye say bye bye so you tell them to like the video and subscribe. We'll list all the books down below. There's links to ways you can find us on social media and links to support our channel. Yeah, oh, thank you. What do we tell them? We say stay blessed, hydrated, moisturized, and sunscreened. And we'll see you in our next one. Bye, say bye.